Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and today guys I am very excited to say we are back with another uh, release of Beyond ATC. Really really excited to share this with you guys and stick around because it's going to be a ton of fun. They have really done a great job with this. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator or simply interested in supporting the channel, please consider joining us on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides as well as any future releases that come down the road. Patreon link can be found in the description below. All right, you guys, so as we get into this, I also want to remind everyone, just as I said in the intro, my Overkill's PMDG 737 tutorial guide is fully operational with the PMDG 737, both 700 and 800 series of aircraft. If you guys are interested in subscribing, $10 or more gets you access to all of my guides. We also have the Learjet 35 uh, guide right around the corner. It is quite an awesome aircraft. It took a ton of time to gather real world information on that thing. It is very locked down for some reason. It was really hard to get. Yeah, but anyway, I digress. Um, the PMDG 737 guide, as you guys can see, is a little outdated at 625.22. There is an update currently in the process in which we are adding the universal EFB functionality to it. Not a whole lot to it, but other than that, the aircraft has pretty much remained the same. I have done three test flights over the last couple of days using the guide, and it has worked perfectly and flawlessly every time. So if you guys are interested, and I know there are a ton of, U a ton of YouTube videos out on tutorials, but if you guys are interested in having a hard copy of something, something that you can just look and reference at your own pace, without doing play, pause, play, pause, this is an option and it definitely helps me out. So, wanted to make sure you guys were aware we are going to be using this guide during the flight, even though we're not taking the same flight as in the guide. All the procedures will be the same. All right, you guys, so as we get started in this, let's start talking about a couple things that you can expect from this video. First off, we are going to be having chapters down below. How the chapters will work is if it says taxi, then uh, that point will be right before I make the radio call so that way you guys don't miss anything. There will be quite a few that are combined. The cruise is going to be the hardest part just because the cruise is so long, obviously. Uh, so I'll do my best to have some of those included in there, but I'm probably going to trim out a lot of the cruise. Um, and then obviously the descent will probably be one big thing because again that happens fairly quickly a little slower in the beginning But once especially once we contact approach uh, things will speed up quite a bit <clears throat> You are going to hear the auto respond uh, The auto respond is an extremely handy feature. It's two prong here at one If you just don't feel like talking into the microphone you want the software to do it for you and two It's very handy especially at cruise if you want to get up and go get a drink, go to the restroom, whatever it may be, you can turn the auto respond on. Uh, just keep in mind that if you're giving an instruction to like descend or climb or something like that, obviously that's that could be a problem because your aircraft's not gonna be there, but it might buy you some time. Um, and then the other thing you're gonna see is the auto tune of the frequency. So Beyond ATC has the ability to automatically tune the next frequency once the communication chain between the uh, current uh, department, if you will, is completed. Uh, so you guys are going to see all that. Now with the auto respond, um, you guys should still recognize the uh, beautiful voice that you guys are going to hear. And I do believe that will be included with the premium uh, voices if you guys choose to go that route when the software releases. All right. So uh, let me pull up my uh, Overkill 737 guide and let's get started right away. I already have the aircraft fueled, passengers loaded, cargoes loaded. Uh, so we're not messing around with things like that. Uh, we're just going to zip right through, get the aircraft up and running. All right, so off we go. So first thing, we're coming upstairs. Battery gets turned on. Standby power is guarded and on auto. Guys, I, by the way, I am going to be going through this very, very quickly. Uh, so just bear with me on that. Again, the guide is available on Patreon if you guys want a physical document. Um, emergency exit lights are armed and on here. Um, electro electric hydraulic pumps are turned off. Um, I'm not going to worry about the ground power today. That's the other thing. We're going to go straight into starting the APU. So that is a bit of a difference uh, between this and the gar guide. Obviously, under normal circumstances, we would have the APU running or uh, the ground power running. But I just want to get this thing up and going. Um, and then we have to make sure our wipers are in the park position. While the APU is starting up, let's keep working our way down here. Clear the master caution. Make sure your gear handle is down. Three green indicating. 
flaps are showing retracted and indicating as such on the uh, flap indicator as well. Let's work through a couple of the tests here. So first we're gonna go for the uh, fault test. And then we're gonna come over and do the overheat and fire test. All right. I hate, I, some of these click spots drive me nuts are too small. Okay, and then the extinguisher discharge for the engines. Come on, you drive me crazy. And the APU, okay. And then we need generator power in order to do the cargo test. You can see the lights, but we're not getting the alarm, so we have to wait a second here. So we're gonna go upstairs here. What we can do is get our IRS. IRS. <laughs> Ah, uh, bad time to be talking about that right before April, right? Anyway, get that up and rolling. Uh, we don't have any generator power there yet either, so we'll hold off on that. Let's see what the APU is at. Should be up and ready by now. APU is ready to go, so we're going to turn the APU gen on. There we go. Now we can complete the rest of these tests. So again, now you can see the flight recorder. Go to test, make sure the light extinguishes. Mock and airspeed warnings, one. And two. Oh, and I believe we need the electric uh, hydraulic pumps on to do the stall warnings. All right, clear the master caution. Always clear your master cautions. That way, if you get a new one, you get some indication that it took place. So let's keep moving forward here. Let's come back down and finish our test here on the cargo heat. There we go. Good to go. Good to go. All right. And so now we can start moving into some radio communication here. Uh, let me double check everything. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, let's do some lights tests. Master caution, master warnings. Alerts. Lights test. Looking good. All right. And finally, last thing is the oxygen test. We're gonna test our side. First officer, you better test your own because otherwise you're on your own there, buddy. And again, clear master cautions. All right, fuel and payload are already set in the aircraft, so I don't have to worry about that. We're skipping that for now. Let's go ahead and contact ATIS. All right, so I'm gonna go to the taxi charts on Navigraph and get our ATIS frequency 127575. All right, and this will be our first radio transmission. Wind 240 at 7 visibility 10. Temperature 19er. Dew point minus 01. Altimeter 29076. Landing and departing runways 26, 25 right, 25 left. Bur activity in vicinity of airport. Advise on initial contact, you have information, Alpha. Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport information, Alpha. 02510. Wind 240 at 7, visibility 10. Temperature 19er. Dew point minus 01. Altimeter 29076. Landing and departing runways 26. 25 right, 25 left. Bird activity in vicinity of airport. Advise on initial contact, you have it. Okay, so one of the things I do want to talk about real quick is uh, in a previous video I did a long time ago, when people heard that uh, ATIS voice, they were like, oh, the ATIS sounds like crap, that's garbage, blah, blah, blah. Guys, I want you to do me a favor. If you feel that that ATIS voice is wrong, I want you to go to liveatc.net. Look for Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport and uh, listen to the ATIS. Uh, you will hear the same voice and you will hear that same sound across multiple commercial airports across the country. Uh, it is very commonly used now, uh, which is odd. You would have thought they would have found something a little bit clearer. I, would, I agree with that. Um, I am going to force our IRS to finish aligning. I don't want to wait. Now it's set to instant. So you know what? I think we're gonna go up. Shut it off. All right, there we go. I just had to cycle it one more time, wait a little bit longer. All right, cool, so we've already got our course or our uh, location set. There we go, that's what I wanted to see. All right, 
So let's keep moving forward. KPHX already in the scratch pad. Set in our destination. KLAX. There we go. Flight number Southwest Airlines 0368. There we go. Runway, we're departing from 25 right. Okay, and now let's move to our departures and arrivals. And we're looking for the Keens 3. Over in transition. 2 5 right. Route. Next page. Going direct to Eastwood. Okay, departures and arrivals. Select our arrival. Looking for the Hollywood 1 with the Eastwood transition. Expecting the ILS 24 right using the CVU transition. And then we're going back to root, activate, execute, legs page. Looking for any breaks, discontinuities, everything looks good. You can go through the steps if you want, but uh, I'm not going to worry about that. Although, all of that obviously is done in the guide. Okay, I'm just trying to get us moving here. Okay, so even though I did this way ahead of the game, let's go ahead and now contact uh, clearance, ground, pushback, all that. We'll get that zipped through pretty fast. All right, so since I went ahead and jumped ahead a bit just to get the preparation done, we've got our flight plan in. We have uh, the aircraft pretty much ready just about for pushback and all that jazz. We just have to do the performance numbers, but let's go ahead and get our clearance. So clearance and departure for Phoenix is 118.1. Phoenix clearance, Southwest 368, looking for IFR to Los Angeles. Southwest 368, Phoenix clearance, cleared to Los Angeles Airport, Keens Tree departure, Wolverine transition, then as filed, maintain 5000, departure frequency 128.65, squawk 1360. Cleared to Los Angeles via the Keens Tree departure with the Wolverine transition, then as filed, maintain 5000, departure frequency 12865, squawk 1360, Southwest 368. Southwest 368, read back correct. Contact ground 1 tree 2.55 when ready for pushback or engine start. Contact ground 3255 when ready for push start. Awesome. We're good. All right. So let's finish things up. So now we're going to come in here. We're going to go back to our initial reference and start getting the rest of our numbers in. Uh, final reserves on the fuel is going to be 2.0 today. Cost index is 8. And uh, zero fuel. We are fully loaded here. And let's see here. I think winds up at cruise. Top of climb. We're 334 at 72 knots. Oh, my bad. Clear that. And you know what? I won't worry about the winds today. I have to pull the flight back up, and I don't feel like doing it. All right, so there we go. N1 limit. All right, we'll fix that in a minute. I know exactly what the issue is there. Uh, we're not going to set any D-rate. We're just going to rock and roll today. Flaps 5. Set our trim. 1, 3, 2 on in the box. And we're going to do 1, 3, 2 plus 5. Just gives us a better climb out. And let's set the trim. Looking for about six degrees. Talk about the boring part, huh? All right, close enough. Let's move over to the legs page. All 
RTO on the brakes. Flight director's on. All right, and I am confident. Let's go upstairs and let's finish this up. All right, fuel pumps go to on. Yaw damper on. Get through the flows here. No seat belt or uh, no seat belts. No portable devices. Seat belts. Hit the attend button. Let them know we're getting ready to roll. Windshields on. Electric hydraulic pumps on. Packs, we would normally have them on by now if you want to simulate it. Obviously, passengers are the boarding, you want the aircraft to be cool. While you're connected to ground power and even under the APU, you'll have the packs on. But when it comes for engine start, you shut them off. Isolation valve goes to open. APU bleed can stay off for the moment. Set our cruise altitude for 36,000 feet. And landing altitude is 26 feet. So we'll set it to 50. All right, and anti-collision lights are on. And strobes go to strobe and steady. All right, other than that, I think we are ready to rock and roll. So let's uh, contact ground and uh, see if we can get permission to get out of here. Phoenix grounds, Southwest 368, ready for push and start. Southwest 368, Phoenix ground, pushback approved. Pushback approved, Southwest 368, thank you. All right, let's get that uh, push rolling. Cockpit to ground. This is ground, stand by. Come on. Oh, it's not the parking brake. For pushback. Oh, it's not. Cockpit to ground. Go ahead. We are cleared for start and push. Okay, cleared for push start. Please release parking brake. Parking brakes are released. All right. Yeah, we'll start in the sequence. Oh, crap. APU bleed. Back's complete. I remember doing that. Back 
All right, let's finish this up. Ground Southwest 368, ready for taxi to runway. Southwest 368, runway 25, right taxi via 6 Delta 1, 2, Echo, Echo 1, Tree. Taxi runway 25, right via 6 Delta 12, Echo, Echo 1, Tree, Southwest 368. Southwest 368, contact Phoenix Tower 120.9 or have a good day. Contact tower 120.9 or southwest 368. We'll give them a buzz in just a second here. Made that turn a little fast, didn't we? Tower Southwest 368, holding short runway 25, right ready for departure. Southwest 368, Phoenix Tower, wind 240 at 7, our nav to Wolco. Runway 25 right, cleared for takeoff. Our nav to Wilco, cleared for takeoff, runway 25 right, Southwest 368. Pretend we got approval for a rolling takeoff, too. Stable. Toga. Airspeed alive. Pretending I cross checked that. <laughs> Southwest 368, contact Phoenix Departure. Have a good one. Southwest 368, contact Phoenix Departure. Thank you. Phoenix Departure, Southwest 368 at 3500. Southwest 368, Phoenix Departure. Good day. Radar contact. Climb and maintain flight level 180. Climb and maintain flight level 180, Southwest 
All right, rocking and rolling here, man. Looking good so far. Should get a call for Albuquerque Center here pretty soon. There's 10,000. Lights are off, auto brakes off, landing gear is locked. TCAS reporting. LNAV nav. I never did set the damn runway heading, did I? Oops. Oh well. This is like the fourth time of me trying to do this video today. Every single time something interrupted me. Or like things just like kept going wrong. And with everything except for what I'm trying to show off. Like Beyond ATC has been great. <laughs> the sim crashed on me once. Been an interesting ride. Oh, by the way, for those of you who don't know. Um, and I'll remind you guys again when we get closer to landing. There won't be any reverse thrust today. Sim update beta 15 has broken reverse thrust on multiple aircraft. So that's exciting. It's just been one of those days. I started trying to record this initially at about 11 o'clock this morning. It is now quarter to nine at night here in Tucson. <clears throat> so, yeah, it's been great. And like I said, it's been everything... There's been a problem with everything except for what I'm trying to actually show you guys. It's been a pain in the butt. Been one of it's just been one of those days. Right? Right. Southwest three sixty eight, contact Albuquerque Center one two six point four five. See you. Contact Albuquerque Center, 12645, Southwest 368, thank you. Albuquerque Center, Southwest 368 at uh, 15,000. Southwest 368, Albuquerque Center, climb and maintain flight level 360. Climb and maintain flight level 360, Southwest 368. All right. Well, that's awesome sauce, isn't it? So what I'm going to do here, guys, is uh, we're going to go for the auto respond. So uh, our next switch off will be like LA Center, and you guys will get to hear the auto respond. Southwest 368, contact Los Angeles Center 127.52. Contact Los Angeles Center 127.52, Southwest 368. See you. Los Angeles Center, Southwest 368. Good day. Climbing flight level 343 for flight level 360. Southwest 368, Los Angeles Center, roger. All right, you guys, and that was me in the auto respond. How cool is that? Um, and again, I believe that it is part of the premium voices. So when you guys purchase the product, um, if you are using the premium voices, you should be able to hear me in your home every day. Isn't that a terrifying thought? 
Alright, so let's see where we're at here. I think we still have a ways to go until our top of descent. Let's come down to the descent page. Oop. What is going on? Oh, I know what happened. I messed up the wrong view. I saved, resaved a view. I was trying to resave my flight deck view or my window view. And I think I fat fingered it and replaced this one. Okay, so let's go to the descent page. We're about a hundred miles yet. All right, so let's see. Here, I would guess what was it? About twenty minutes, give or take. Okay, so I will uh, catch you guys as we get closer to our top of descent. Um, the I will leave the auto respond uh, for our next call in which we'll get the order hopefully to descend uh, we'll see if they give us a target altitude or have us uh, descend via the, the uh, star today we'll see what happens all right so uh, i'll see you guys in a bit southwest tree 68 descend via flyout one arrival los angeles airport landing runway 24 right altimeter 29 or 9 or 2. descend via the hollywood arrival Altimeter 29902, nine expect runway 24 right, southwest 368. Alright, let's get moving. And down we go. <clears throat> Good stuff. All right, so we have entered in our ILS frequency, got it live. We've entered in our descent data, got our wind set, set our takeoff or our landing configuration. We've got our final headings locked into the computer. Our reference speed is now configured. Looking for one, two, nine knots. We should be uh, getting the handoff to SoCal approach here pretty quick. Approaching transition altitude. And yes, for anyone who might have caught it, I know I put a splash up on the screen because I already saw it and decided I was going to. Uh, but I did finally notice that uh, we were at flaps 5 through that entire flight. I had pressed the button on my uh, HOTAS to retract the flaps and I thought I heard them go up and... Never bothered to pay attention to the bright green light that was telling me leading edge flaps were out. So, live and learn. Live and learn. Like I said, this is the fourth time I've attempted this video today. Been at it since 11 o'clock this morning for various reasons. And so, you know, it was just bound to happen. <laughs> it was just bound to happen. We should be getting that handoff pretty quick here. All right, let's go ahead and switch on down to. Oh, cool! And it just happens to be two nine nine or two. Makes it nice. Might change when we get the approach information, but we'll see what happens. And here it comes. Southwest three sixty eight contact SoCal approach one two seven point four. Contact SoCal approach one two seven point four Southwest three six eight. SoCal approach, Southwest 368 at 17,000. Southwest 368, verify information, Zulu. Damn it, I always forget to check ATIS. We have information, Zulu, Southwest 368. Southwest 368, SoCal approach, altimeter 29 or 9 or 2, expect the ILS runway 24 right via Sea View. Expect the ILS 24 right via Sea View, altimeter 29 or 9 or 2, Southwest 368. Looking good, guys. Looking good. Southwest Tree 68, cleared direct sea view, cross sea view at or above 12,000. Cleared ILS runway 24 right. Cross sea view at or above 12,000. Cleared for the ILS 24 right, Southwest 368.
I'm going to increase our descent rate. I want an easy descent. <laughs> I'll even start slowing us down a little bit. Let those engines roll back. I, just, I don't want to be 3,000 feet high and then have to wonder whether or not I'm going to hit my target because I know we need to be at 10,000 by the initial approach fix. We're actually supposed to be, according to the chart, it's 10,000 at Cebu, but I know we still have plenty of time because I think it's 10,000, 10,000... And then I think it starts to drop down, so we still have plenty of time, don't get me wrong. I'll at least get down to 13,000 and then we'll go back to VNAV. There's the turn. All right, let's set auto brakes to three. By the way, folks, for those who did not catch it earlier, and I'll say it one more time before we land, there will be no reverse thrust. Um, as, um, unfortunately, let's pull some spoilers out. Uh, sim update beta 15 um, broke reverse thrust for multiple aircraft and unfortunately this appears to be one of them no matter you can get it to engage but i can't get it to give me full robust full robust full reverse um thrust so just one of those like all right whatever all right let's pull those back in All right. See, but no, you have to, you have to keep going here, plane. Although I didn't really tell it altitude intervention, did I? It's trying to slow to my speed, isn't it? There she goes. There we go. That's a better descent rate. Thank you. All right. Give myself a little bit of a head start here as we approach 10,000 feet. Let's start getting our lights turned on. We'll turn the taxi light on even though the wheels are up, but a little hard to do when you're so low. And that's the thing I always recommend, guys, when you're flying these aircraft. You know, especially when you're learning them. Like if you guys are going through the guide, give yourself lots of time. There's no harm in doing a lot of this stuff early. It might make the flight a little slower depending on what you're doing, but it's worth it. And we're just waiting for the localizer to populate. As soon as we start getting some DME, we'll switch to the approach mode. All right, so flaps are three. Let's come up and check everything. Check, check, check. Let's go engines back to continuous again, saving ourselves a little bit of time here. Everything else looks okay. All right, turning on to our final approach course. Looking good. Like I said, just waiting on that DME information. All right, folks, this will be the last recording segment for those of you who are on the timestamps. So we are uh, on the approach mode. We've acquired the localizer. We're just waiting to acquire the glide slope. Approach looking good. We're about, uh, looks like about 18 miles out, give or take, 22 miles out, actually. Almost ready to start slowing down. Not quite yet.
And there it is. There's our runway. So now I will start slowing us down. So speed intervention. And I'm just going to start slowing us down. Gonna look for 200 knots. Go ahead and go flaps one. Pull some spoilers out to help slow us down a bit. And bring us down to 10 miles here. There's 220 going flaps 5. Spoilers are armed. Still looking for that glide slope. I see it right here. It's coming. So I'm pretty sure that's it. Southwest 368, contact Los Angeles Tower 133.9er. Contact Los Angeles Tower 133.9er. Southwest 368. <clears throat> Had a bug in my throat. All right. Gear coming down. Little concerned that we're not getting the glide slope yet. I wonder if I was just too far beneath it, because that's what it looks like happened. There it goes. Oh no, we're just catching the altitude. All right, let's start slowing her down again. And our reference speed is 129 knots. There it is. Gosh. Flap still coming in. Did I get that? Oh, crap, I didn't. Los Angeles Tower, Southwest 368 on uh, final for the ILS 25 right approach. 24 right approach. Ooh, 25 right, 24 right. Crap. Southwest 368, Los Angeles Tower, wind 280 at 14. Runway 24 right, cleared to land. Clear to land, runway 24 right, Southwest 368. I just got to sit here thinking, I'm like, why haven't I heard from the tower? <laughs> oh, gosh, guys, I, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know anymore. <laughs> uh, if I dare, I'm going to disable the uh, autopilot here. Are you actually turned off? Yes. Okay. Gosh. 
Alright, we're getting high now. place man come on Mike get it together get it together Mike get it together acting ridiculous here space shuttle approach come on baby get under there get under there get under there Hush. Hush. I got it. I got it. Embarrassing. And remember, we do not have reverse thrust due to a bug in Sim Update 15 beta. Southwest 368, exit left at Yankee. Exit left at Yankee, Southwest 368. Flaps coming up. West tree 68, contact ground one tree 1.9 or 7. Contact ground one tree 1.9 or 7, southwest 368, thank you. Negative ground on one tree 1.9 or 7. Contact ground one three one nine or 7, southwest 368. Los Angeles ground, Southwest 368, ready for taxi to gate. Southwest 368, welcome to Los Angeles airport. Gate parking tree tree, scenery at this airport does not contain taxi data. Taxi at pilot's discretion. <laughs> okay, I like that it does that. So the issue here is I believe I am using a third party version of Los Angeles and I did not think about that. And so it doesn't know what the layout is. And uh, so rather than... Southwest Tree 68. Oops. Welcome to Los Angeles Airport. Gate right. parking tree tree. Scenery at this airport does not contain taxi data. Taxi at pilot's discretion. Taxi pilot's discretion. Parking 33. Three, Southwest 368. Thank you. Have a good day. Okay, so rather than ruin the whole experience and just say, nope, we don't know how to taxi for you. It just tells you that there isn't any parking data. And this is going to be one of those things where Cap was talking about one of his previous videos about the hub that uh, we are going to be able to submit taxi information based on third party airports or incorrect information, things like that, that once validated will be added to the software. So again, really slick stuff, guys. But before I can screw anything else up this late at night, I'm going to end the video here. That is the end of our Beyond ATC interaction, so it's a perfect time to stop before I hurt somebody. There's probably going to be somebody out on the ramp that I'm going to hit with the wing. So, you know, um, anyway, you know, or I'm going to hit Santa Claus or something or, you know, have one of the engines eat a reindeer. Something's going to happen. So, as always, guys, I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. At the very least, you got to see Beyond ATC and its incredible action. Um, and uh, I'm very, very excited for the progress that has been made on this software. And I cannot wait until it is in all of your hands as well. There's going to be many, many, many more Beyond ATC videos coming out of this channel over the coming weeks now that it's in a position where I'm able to showcase it. So, as always, guys, stay safe and healthy. And I shall see you all in the next one.